Hey guys. All right. Sorry, I'm just listening to a bit of a podcast. Listening to my man Gary V, who is a fan of the New York Jets and is a man that has inspired me, um, along with the guy Greg Plett that I've talked about before, along with a few others that I will talk about in the future, I'm sure. But Gary V is definitely one guy who's inspired me to crush it, or at least try to. Um, <clears throat> with that said, there is going to be a video coming up very soon where I try and get in contact with Gary. I'm going to ask you guys to try and tag him, or comment on his page, or do something, um, a call to action to get him to watch my channel and then hopefully give his opinion on it because I'd love for Gary V to see one of my videos and know that he inspired me to be doing what I'm doing right now. So with that said, fuck I've said with that said about three times already, um, in the next video I'm going to look at the New York Jets, I'm going to try and research what his favourite player is, I'm going to look at it because I don't actually think I've looked at one person from the New York Jets yet, so that's going to be fun, but in the meantime, you know what, I've got something to do. Finally, I'm going to find out what these guys are all about, okay? I bought this top, you know, I'm been, I, can, I was completely unaware that any of this was going to happen, alright? Pretty much 12 months ago, I went on eBay, which is Australia's version of Amazon over in the US. I went on eBay, and I looked up NFL tops, and there was one top that I bought. There was one top that I'd seen the logo for before, I knew I liked it, I knew I wanted it, so I went on the site and looked for it, and that was Green Bay Packers. I thought that they were a baseball team. I didn't even know at first that they were an NFL team. So I bought the top, as you can see, I've still got it, it cost me about $60, which is a lot. I honestly don't even know if it's real, but I hope it is. Anyways, it's been one of my favourite tops ever since I got it, and now I actually know who the Green Bay Packers are. So it's made it a whole lot more special. And today, finally, I'm going to learn the story behind the Green Bay Packers. I've been, I've been told a few things over the past month or so. I've been told that they are a team with a stadium of around about 100,000 people. I've actually seen a picture of it, Lambeau Stadium. I'm not sure how to say it, but it looks absolutely amazing. And I honestly think that my first game in America could well be at that stadium. So I got told about the stadium, but I also got told that there's only 100,000 people that live there in Green Bay, in Wisconsin. Believe it or not, I had heard about Wisconsin before because my dad traveled there when I was about 10 or 11 years old. Um, he went there for a month and he came back. He, you know, that's how I knew Wisconsin. At that point, I didn't even know where California was or New York or anything. So Wisconsin was actually the first town or the first city or the first state sorry, um, in America that I'd ever heard about. And my dad went to the Mall of America and he took pictures and everything. He bought me about heaps of stuff. He just described it to me. He described walking around the Mall of America. It was absolutely massive. It's like nothing he'd ever seen before. And ever since then, as a 10-year-old, I've always wanted to go to Wisconsin and go to the Mall of America. So maybe one day I'll actually make that happen. And that that's pretty epic. In fact, you know what? I want to bring my dad with me. That would be really cool. So anyways, Green Bay Packers. A year ago, I bought this t-shirt and I had no idea what the hell I was doing. And now, we've come full circle. I do know what I'm doing, or at least I'm trying. And I'm going to finally find out what this really means. The other thing that I was told, as well as the stadium, as well as the place only having 100,000 people, was that it's the only team in the NFL that is owned by the community. I'm not sure exactly how that works, I'm hoping I learn that today. In the meantime, sit back, relax, get your popcorn, I've got my coffee, I'm going to roll the intro and see you back here in a sec. It's a disaster when your glasses are, are all dirty, I tell you. It's an absolute disaster. How many of you guys let me, give me an idea in the comment section below. How many of you guys actually think that I need to wear these glasses? How many of you guys think that I wear these for a fashion statement? Because a lot of people do, believe it or not. 
But the reality is, is that if I take these off, I can't see myself in the blue viewfinder anymore. I've got to put these on to see myself. Literally, after about two meters in front of me, well, probably about 80 centimeters to be honest, um, it starts going blurry. My eyesight is absolutely shocking. And to play on the field, I need to wear contact lenses. But during the day, and when I'm not playing sport, when I'm not doing activities that I want to run around in, I usually wear glasses. And I can't believe that I've been wearing glasses for the times that I've gone down to the field. I mean, that's ridiculous in my books, but obviously it's just training. If I was to actually train or play, you know, go to rugby training or play a rugby game or play basketball or do anything um, to do with physical activity, I usually put in contact lenses because glasses, they can, they're just too much of a hassle and they can fall off. But if I do want to wear glasses or I have to wear glasses if I've got no contact lenses, I've got no other choice, then I put a beanie on or I put my headband on to try and keep them in place. So with that said, let's get into this video. I cannot wait actually. Bay Packers. Hmm. Green Bay Packers um, documentary. America's, I oh know. Green Bay Packers 2010 Super Bowl run. The Packers' unique, oh, here we go. Awesome. Heart of Green Bay. The Packers' unique relationship with their fans. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. From Madison, Milwaukee, Ashland, Beloit. From Cameron, New <laughs> nah, honestly guys, I have no allegiance, right? I'm not, I'm not saying I'm going for Green Bay just yet. I've got no allegiance, so just so you guys know. Sorry, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to watch that again. From Madison. Actually, who's made this? NFL Network. Oh, I'll subscribe to them. New Glarus, Stockholm, and Troy. From the end of August, in a blaze of head-high coal, the superiors tundra on a crystal cold February morning, when it was eight degrees, three degrees, oh. thirteen below, and the breath from eighty thousand went up like a single cloud of smoke. Fucking hell! Look at that! I thought it got cold in Christchurch. It was on fire, and it was. Oneida Street burning, and Ridge Road, Lombardi Avenue ablaze in flames of green and gold. Welcome to Lambeau Field in Green Bay as the Green Bay Packers renew their rivalry with the Chicago Bears. Rogers Nelson. corner here. Don't mind my dog. She won't take too big of a bite out here. <laughs> oh, mate. He this uses that joke every time someone comes over. Night. I can tell. This is my uh, Packer getaway. It needs to be bigger, but this is what I've got. This is the jersey I wore when I was about 11 years old. I never took it off. It kind of got a little dirty. My mom would wash it, and uh, she would... Uh, Wash it, hang it on the line before it was dry. I'd put it back on because I wanted to have my Bart Starr jersey. This is my little section of Lambeau Field that I have. This is actually I love this guy. turf, grass from Lambeau Field. And I'm very, very proud of it. There's not many people that have actual Lambeau Field growing in their yard. <laughs> I had a few no, things not. on and I uh, went to the doctor and I told him what was happening. He uh, did some tests and he sat back down and he said, Frank, you have prostate cancer and it's it's not good. Um, hit me pretty hard, to be very honest with you. And uh, they found out it was uh, stage four. I delayed my surgery because the doctor had set up for a Monday. I had a game on Sunday. 
I said, well, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go with surgery. I got a game to go to. I'm not going to miss this. I contacted my doctor, and he kind of was astounded, but changed my appointment to another time, another week. And I went to the game, had a good time. I went to the hospital, had my uh, prostate out, and everything's good. It really bothered me that I was going to miss a game, so I, I had to postpone it. Here's the snap. Rogers looking for it. That's the kind of fans you guys have. That's amazing. Green Bay Packers to this city and to the, and I'll say the state of Wisconsin is huge. You have to understand that the owners are the people. They own the team. How does that work? We have a, an, an owner. We have the fans. They're they're the owners. I remember when I got drafted. Um, I remember I moved in uh, to my into my little duplex right around the corner from Lambeau Field, and I remember people knocked on my door and gave me cookies. I mean, I was <laughs> accustomed to walk. We just want to welcome you to the neighborhood. I'm thinking like, is this poison? I'm from Los Angeles. You don't just make cookies for <laughs> for somebody. You know, this is like like what they call that show, uh, Andy Griffith show. Or, I mean, it's like one of those things. You know, people knew you. you just I like that guy too. Cook. I mean, you just smell football in the air. You know, it is a home game, right? Everything shuts down. People got their, they're gone. Oh, never seen that before. I've never seen a fumble from the quarterback before. I've been a season ticket holder since 19. Oh, bay. When oh, this bay. stadium outside my door here was built. My dad says, you better go down and, and buy yourself some of the season tickets. So my boyfriend at the time. Such a sick and logo, I went man. Down and we, we bought the tickets. But he... Who's been a legendary number 27 for the Green Bay Packers? That's what I want to know. In fact, you know what? Look, sorry guys, we're just going to go, um, my lucky number is 27, it always has been. I see a shitload of 27s, for whatever reason, in this game. So, I'm going to look up who it is at the moment. Josh Jones. Who is he? He's three years younger than me, there he is, Josh, Josh Jones. Six foot one, same height as me. 220 pounds, about nine, eight or nine kilos heavier than me at the moment. But that's not going to be the case. My stats are going to be exactly that in about four months, I'd say. Five months, six months. Give me, give me six months and my stats will read exactly the same, except I'm going to be 28 years old. But it'll be 185 and 220 pounds. I can't wait. He's got a 40 yard dash of 4.41. Well, I don't know that I'll get that. And a bench press of 20 reps. Well, I don't know that I'll get that. And a broad jump of 11 feet. And a vertical jump of 37 and a half inches. Those are some good numbers, man. And he played all games last year, he started seven of them, he made 71 tackles and one interception and two sacks and he plays safety. Right, well it doesn't look like I'm going to take number 27 for the Green Bay Packers anytime soon. And I hope you have a great career buddy. But let's get back to this. He had the tickets in his name so I had to marry him because <laughs> I would lose a season ticket. I fell in love with the Green Bay Packers when I started bowling with Jackie Nitschke, whose husband, Ray Nitschke. Look at those pads! Player. <laughs> I asked her, I says, if I could get his eyes. Oh, fuck, what a hit! Oh, she says, just give him a cup of Shit! Ray Nitschke. Ray Nitschke. Who was a Packer player. I asked Look at this hit! If I could get his eye. Oh! Oh, she says, just give him a call on the phone. So I did. I got the phone number and I called him and 
He answered the phone and I said what I wanted and he says, oh, this afternoon I'm going to be over at the bar on whatever, off Oneida Street. We went over there and sure enough, there he was. He took his Super Bowl ring off and he tossed it to my seven-year-old son and he caught it. Luckily, he caught it. This is... I would kind of so a love a Super Bowl ring. The community. Jones the tailback, Rikoski that would be nice. Jones up the middle. Yes, the Touchdown! You know what? <laughs> we're going to look up... Um, we're going to go... Um, Super Bowl ring for sale. I want to know what they're worth. Sports memorabilia. Oh, here we go. eBay. Super Bowl ring. Oh. Steelers Super Bowl ring. Is that what it looks like? Packers Super Bowl ring. Green Bay Packers Super Bowl ring. I really want to find one now. Super Bowl ring cost. Oh, 36,500. Most rings are manufactured by memorabilia company Jostens. In 2015, the rings for the New England Patriots reportedly cost $36,500 each, making them the most expensive rings Jostens have ever produced. The Super Bowl ring. What is it made of? Replicas of rings are popular collectibles, along with genuine rings. Dave Meggett is known to have placed his ring for sale on eBay. Two Super Bowl rings from the 1970s Steelers sold on eBay for over $69,000 a piece in mid-2008. In 2011, a Super Bowl ring belonging to Steve Wright, a lineman for the Green Bay Packers in the 1960s, sold for over $73,000 at auction. 73 grand. Three Super Bowl rings belong to former Raiders punter Ray Guy, bought over... 96,000 at auction. Three rings bought $96,000 for a Raiders punter, Ray. What? Ray Guy. Is that a, isn't that an award? Ray Guy is an award for the best punter in college football, is that right? Not sure. Anyways, it looks like you might. Oh, Lawrence Taylor. In 2012, Lawrence Taylor's son sold his father's Super Bowl ring from 1990. For more than 250,000! Whoa! Yeah, it depends whose they are, obviously. What team, what year. But it looks like you can get at least, at least 30 grand, like it says. They're worth 36 and a half when they're made. So, 30 grand and upwards, I'd say. Sorry guys, I just have to find things like that out. You score a touchdown as a Green Bay Mark player. Daniels. And Lambeau Field. You get to run and jump into the stands and be amongst the greatest fans. Literally jumping in their arms oh. after scoring a touchdown. You can't beat that. No, you can't, man. That would be amazing. Go, Daniels. Does he get the chance to do it? I didn't think he... Oh, get up there. <laughs> The Lambo Leap it was unlike any experience I've ever had. Spence, man, it's always great to see you, buddy. Oh, yeah. Being an athlete, well, my love for anime and manga is is very unique. Spencer is a avid Dragon Ball fan as myself. And I love he, Dragon Ball Z. He does these uh, fence paintings every year to have myself drawn across the street. From Lambo. Who's he? Napa. Probably one of the most awesome things I've ever seen. Napa. Everybody sees it when they drive past the stadium. Everybody sees it when they come for the games. To be able to display our love for Dragon Ball like that and combining it with Packer football. Big Mike Daniels. There's, there's really nothing cooler than that. This is awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is a football town. They love this game. They love the players and. In return, we love them back. Rogers, good protection. One foot to the end zone. There was nobody in the area, coach. And the Packers run a dagger into the Bears. 
Best offensive game by far this season for these Green Bay Packers. Now, obviously, you know, there's been some injuries and stuff like that, but hey, one thing about the Green Bay Packers, there is no excuses. I believe the Green Bay Packers are going to have a good year. I think you're going to always have an opportunity to see this team get to the playoff and, and win it all. 2017 Packers, we're going to score a lot of points. Our defense has improved. I'm ready to go to Minneapolis to watch Super Bowl in uh, February. I've never been part of a team and a community that's been this close. Yeah! That's something that we take pride in. Oh my god, they have a... They have... They had a Green Bay themed wedding. Oh man. Okay. Um, geez, I don't want to stop watching it to be honest. Let's see what else there is. Um, something small. <laughs> What's it like to live in Green Bay and hate the Packers? Why would you hate the Packers, man? This should be funny. God, imagine living there. <laughs> imagine living there. It's literally like... It must be just pack a mad, eh? Oh, man. I don't even know what it would be like. It's just it's crazy. I want to know how... <laughs> I want to know how it's owned by the people, though. Is it like... It's just state-owned. Or like town or city-owned. And any profits just go back to the city. And no one takes any profits. I assume. Old is everywhere. On the fire hydrant. Houses, street signs, regular signs, businesses, whatever this is. Playgrounds, buses, the mayor, malls, dumpsters, and even, yes, Christmas. In Green Bay, even the trash cans are green and gold. Green and gold. Green and gold. Well, the green and gold... The green and gold for, um, well, the green and gold are Australia, actually, as well. <laughs> Believe it or not. Here is real fur, all done for the Packer games. What kind of animal looks like this? You've never seen a green and gold rabbit? This is a town where even the statues speak fluent Packer. You know anybody that hates the Packers? Jeez, I knew it was bad quality. I didn't know it was 144p. Sorry, guys. Hating the Packers in Green Bay? It's like living in the Vatican and hating the Pope. Found a house orange and blue. No football. Soccer. No. Who was that? The size of a small European country. There's got to be somebody here shopping for another team. Right? Do you have anything in a size 1043 helmet? Wrong. This for cross dressing linemen? Do you have these in any other colors? We do not. Everybody in this town is a Packers fan. I wonder how much stuff they go how much merchandise they sell per year. I mean, how much Packers can Green Bay It's such a sick logo though, like it, it's really nice. I'm taking you we don't like the Packers. No, no. Ah, look at this guy! Oh my god. 
<laughs> yeah, that's exactly how I would imagine it. Everywhere. Is there any supporters from another team allowed, even allowed at that stadium? <laughs> Would they even want to be there? I don't know. For Packers haters in Packerland, the struggle <laughs> starts early. My daughter Megan was born here. An hour after she was born, I go to the nursery to see my baby girl, and she's wearing a green and gold stocking cap. There are actually little old ladies that knit green and gold stocking caps for every infant born at St. Vincent Hospital. I want to see Lambo Field um, crowd. Lambo Field erupts. And this is before a play? Ray Lewis, Ray Lewis up in here, <sighs> God, that got me all excited, Lambeau Field crowd, T touchdown, come on, get the touchdown. No, that was terrible. Um, oh my god. Alright, we're going to finish on this, guys. Fan pushes for Lambo crowd to break all time noise records. Fans want revenge on the 49ers, and one super fan wants the stadium to be louder than ever. Jonah Kaplan shows us this game plan. Head up to Lambo Field this weekend, of course, you got to come prepared. Jacket, Those jackets look hat. nice. I want one. Fans, I want to make sure you bring something else. Your boys, go Packers! We got to be loud on Sunday. Um, we should have had a home playoff game last year, but because that failed Mary, we had to go to San Fran. So since we got back in our building, we have to be extra loud. If this is Max Gellert's man cave, consider Lambeau Field his crib. The Packers are the most NFL championships of, of all time, so why should Seattle have the loudest stadium? I mean, we deserve the best and loudest fans in the, in the whole league. Seattle's stadium roar reached a record of 137.6 decibels earlier this year. That's enough to mute heavy traffic, power tools, and an airplane. Anything louder, and you're firing a cannon. But the main thing is that we have to make it hard on the 49ers offense to work. We can't let them just go out there and just operate. We gotta make them force timeouts, false start penalties, um, delay game penalties. We, we have to make it a home field advantage for our pack. You may not find Max around the 78,000 strong at Lambeau Field this Sunday, but the San Francisco 49ers will. He's sitting front row behind the sideline. And cut ahead, Jonah Kaplan, today's TMJ4. And Max created a Facebook page and Twitter feed to rally support. You can find links on our website, tmj4.com. Oh, man, I just, I just imagined being on the sideline just then. That definitely got my imagination going. All right, guys, well, that was, that was that. Three videos. I hope you've made it to the end. If you have, you're an absolute fucking legend. Just like that guy who postponed his prostate cancer bloody... Removal, prostate removal surgery just to make it to the next game and um, that is the kind of fan that you would want for your team isn't it I mean that's just amazing I never I yeah geez I, I, I'd seen this logo before I, ne I didn't even know it was NFL when I bought it like I said um, but it's a nice logo I gotta say the green and gold it's bloody nice and I really like the yellow helmet with the, the classic Green Bay um, logo. Yeah, it's, it's quite nice. So anyways, I'm going to leave you there. If you have liked this video, press like. If you want to subscribe, please do. And I'll see you guys back here for another video very soon. I have no idea what it's going to be. I've smashed through quite a few today. 
So I think this one's probably going to be my last for another week or so. So if you do have any requests, hit me up in the comment section below, but I've most probably done it by now, unless you know, you're seeing this video in a month or two or three. I'd say look through my library, see if I've done it. If not, definitely hit me up in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.